Hi, so this video I will show how I can do an automation task with Soundflow. And in this case, I would like to root the MIDI output. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a script here where I'm going to say reroute MIDI output. Um, and what I first want to do is I want to activate Nuendo. And if you're not like a big coder, there's uh, ways to, to get help. You can, of course, Google stuff, but you can also use a macro. So I'm just going to write reroute temp. Uh, so I'm creating a macro and I say add action and I want to uh, activate the main window of the app and then I can write Nuendo here and then up here there's three dots where I can say copy as JavaScript and uh, now basically if I run this you see it it does that and when I copied it in it does the same it activates the main window I'm just gonna add a trigger while I'm here uh, there so now when I run the trigger this happens uh, as I will be doing a lot of uh, stuff with uh, with Nuendo I'm gonna make a variable that I'm gonna call app and I'm gonna call it as a few I Nuendo uh, so now I'm getting the same uh, I run the command and I get the result I want all right, so far so good. Uh, then the next thing would be to click at the output point. And how I would do that is I'm gonna say app, and then I'm gonna find the window starting with uh, the title, Nuendo, uh, and the um, then I'm gonna click mouse, mouse click element. And it's a relative position to the vin window. So I wanna figure out where I need to click. And the way I usually do it is I press command shift four, which uh, gives you this camera function in uh, OS X. And then I can drag down and it gives me like the X, Y size of the camera. And then when I go down here, I can see it's 50, uh, X is 50, and Y is like 375. So I'm gonna write X is 50, and Y is 375. So when I run this, you can see that it clicks there, and it pops up. And then I could write keyboard, uh, text, uh, not text, type and then text here and the text I want to type in is IAC uh, driver so this is basically the where I want to uh, like whatever I'm I want to type into that uh, pop-up menu and then after that I'm gonna press uh, keys enter so if I run this now, you can see it did all those things. Um, just showing that again. All right. Uh, one thing I though like to do is rather than writing in the text, I like to paste it in. Um, sometimes it's fast, it depends on the menu type. So you can set your clipboard in Soundflow. So I say set text, and then basically it's the same as this. Uh, as the other thing. So now I'm setting the text to this and then before pressing enter I'm gonna say uh, command V uh, which will paste in the text. So if I run this you see that the same thing happened. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is uh, in order to keep doing this on multiple tracks, I want to go to the next track. And there's a few different ways to go to the next track. I could use uh, the key command that I use for selecting the next track, but Soundflow have actually access to every um, key command 
in Nuendo and Cubase through this thing called perform action. So if I write here next track, uh, then I can select track next. And again, I'm clicking the three dots to copy the JavaScript. Um, and you can see that's called Cubendo, which means that it's both for Nuendo and Cubase. Like it doesn't care if it's one or the other. So now when I'm running this here, you could see that it jumped to the next track. And then I basically just want to make it repeat that for all the MIDI channels I want to root again. Um, so let's see here. Just to clean it up a little bit, I'm going to say this is the MIDI output. And I'm going to take this text that I wrote there. And um, in order to repeat a thing like this, I need to say, uh, or I need to make a loop. So I'm going to make a variable. For some reason, we use i quite a lot. Uh, I'm saying i is equal to zero, and i has to be less than, let's say, six. Like we're going to repeat this thing six times. So uh, oh, and then of course, I need to for every time the loop goes through, I gets one bigger. Um, so now if I uh, click here, you can see how it's rooting through all these things. Basically, that's it. Um, you would change Nuendo to Cubase. What I do, I have small cheat uh, code down here. Um, which is basically what it does is that it first looks what is the app. If Nuendo exists, it's going to be Nuendo. If else, it will be Cubase. And uh, the version, it's going to be, it depends if you're using folders. And then Cubendo is basically the title or the title of the app. So instead of writing Nuendo down here, I can put in uh, Cubendo and now it will this function will work both in Nuendo and Cubase so that's uh, neat I should mention when you use the perform action that I I've I found down here when you do that you need to have installed the ski remote you do that by pressing plus and then Steinberg ski remote I can because I already have one um, and you should not have enabled authentication. But this way, Soundflow have access to all the commands. That's it. But, of course, there could be some buts, because um, if, let's say, we had an audio track, uh, it would... Let me just run, and let's see the mess that it's going to make. It can do what it's supposed to do, so it it does basically, it doesn't really do an error, but it doesn't find that output because it's an audio track. So basically, I would like to put in a function here in my script saying, don't do this when it's an audio track. And a way to do this is just gonna show how I mean I do it. If I write throw zero, it's gonna stop the script. So right now, this will not be performed when I'm running the script. Then I'm going to use a lock, which will give me a small pop-up notice when I'm running the script. And what I will do is I'm going to um, check the title of the track. Uh, and let me just show you here. The channel settings is where I can do this. When I'm on a MIDI track, you can see this is the MIDI track title and this is the uh, audio track title. So I say um, app and then window starting with uh, channel settings. And then I'm going to write title value. So when I run the command now, you can see that's the title of the track of, of the channel settings window 
and now it's MIDI running it again. So that's smart. Then I'm gonna say match. And the thing about audio tracks is that they always have a squared parenthesis with the name of the output, and MIDI never has that. So if I say matching this, then let's see what the lock will say. If it's on an audio track, it's going to say that it's matching that. And on a MIDI track, it's going to say null. And you might see that I'm using the squared parenthesis, like the, the end of it. If you use the first part, it's making an error for some reason. Um, so if I say this is equal null, then I get false on a channel setting, uh, on an audio track. And when I'm running it on a MIDI track, I get true. So I can make this into a variable. Uh, removing this and saying, uh, I'm making a variable. Actually, I'm just going to make this a little bit easier to follow. So I'm going to make a variable here, which is, is a MIDI track. Uh, like that. I'm going to paste in this thing. So now this variable is going to say is it's a MIDI track and if I lock is MIDI track and I run this command, I get true on a MIDI track and I get false on an audio track. So I'm going to remove this throw thing and I'm going to take this into the loop. And then I'm going to say, if is a MIDI track, then do these uh, things. Like click the uh, output, play, like click where the output is, uh, paste in the uh, text of the MIDI output. Actually, I could, I could take this one up here. There's no need to paste in the output or that paste that into the clipboard every time. Uh, just and then in the end, uh, paste it in, enter, and then go to next track. So if you see here, yeah. So that basically works. There is a small thing here that I would add a small weight. So I make sure that it doesn't run faster than I want it to. Uh, it's also something to do with the implementation right now of perform action. It doesn't always register it. So let's see here. Yeah, so you see that it's going all smoothly. Um, and there could be another case. Let's say you put these into a folder track. Then we we don't want it to randomly click on stuff here. So basically, we want to read if it's a folder track as well. So I'm going to repeat the process from before. Um, I'm actually getting a little bit ahead of myself. Oh, well. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to lock. The way to know if it's a folder track, I do a little bit differently because I'm going to project. Uh, then you can see here the track version. I'm not able to make a different track version, but on a MIDI track, uh, track versions I can make and audio track as well. So in my code, I'm going to write app, get menu, item, and then I'm going to write the exact path of project, track versions, new version. So project, track, version, with an S, and then new version. Whoop. This has to be exact. And then is enabled. And then when I press on a folder, it's going to say false. On a MIDI track or audio track, it's going to say true. Um, so this way I can also say, I can make this into a variable. It's like uh, if I say um, is not 
a uh, folder. It's not a folder. I'm going to take this, put it in there. So that's my variable. And I'm going to like just check that it's right. I get false on a folder and true on a MIDI track. Now I can combine that with the other function here. Um, I'm going to remove my throw again. And then I'm going to say here is not a folder. So now it will check both uh, if it's a MIDI track and it's not a folder. And it's going to run the command. Um, you can see there, it's going through all the, and it didn't do anything up here. There's one last thing. If the channel settings window is closed and I'm running the command, I'm going to get an error because it can't find the channel setting window title. Um, so maybe before running the command, I would say if app get window uh, window starting with title channel settings and then I'm gonna say exist I, so that I'm putting if I put the exclamation mark before it means the opposite so that means if the channel settings window or, or the window starting with channel settings doesn't exist then I want to open that window I could do that with a key command, but I could again go in here, use the uh, Nuendo uh, Cubase perform action and say, right channel settings, then edit channel settings. Again, use the three dots to copy the JavaScript. Um, and then you can see here, uh, now it will open the channel settings before and so when I run it here, it opens up, oh, I guess, oh yeah. So this is again this implementation of perform action that's a little bit too fast. So if I put in f 50 milliseconds and this is closed, you will see I get the result. Um, and then you see it jumped over here and I believe that's a sound flow bug. Uh, that it doesn't manage to read the menu items. So I'm just going to, for now, add 1000. We didn't need it that when we didn't check the folder, like the menu item. But I believe that's necessary when we have it like this, because it wouldn't read it. So you see, it's f much slower than it was before, because it waits basically a second between every time it does it. Uh, another small detail could be, I could put in whenever it's not a MIDI track, I could say that I will be equal I minus one, which means now it will check or do it on the first six MIDI tracks and not just the first six, one, two, three, four, five, six, like um, the first things, uh, six tracks that it's encountering so it's basically ignoring those that audio track and that folder track and keeps going. So that's a way to make a fairly advanced automation task in Soundflow with another program or like rooting in Nuendo in this case. And you could of course adapt the code into clicking other places or with other apps or jumping between apps. Uh, but I hope this way of me explaining a little bit the code and my approach could help you if you are new to JavaScript. And also, um, there might be changes in later versions of Soundflow where we don't need to put in this SF wait after an, a Cubendo perform action, because that that just seems like a, or this thing where it doesn't read the, the um, uh, menu uh, item properly. But hope this was helpful and uh, have a good time.